Hello. In this chapter we're going to talk about uh, lines and planes. Also, we're going to analyze throughout this chapter what are the conditions for intersecting lines and planes, or lines with planes. In this lesson, I'm going to present you the ways in which we can uh, describe a line in two space and three space. You'll see we're going to make use of vectors. Obviously, that's why we studied them in the previous two chapters. But I'm going to start with something that you already know. If I write y equal mx plus b, we all know that this is the slope intercept form of the of a line, m being the slope, b is the y intercept. And if I look on this sketch where each of these squares of the paper represents one unit, I can count that uh, b equals to 5 and I can determine m to be, since it's uh, rise over run or delta y over delta x, I can count to be delta y is minus 5 over delta x which is 10. So I can simplify that to minus 1 by 2. So the equation of this line, this particular line, I can say is y equal minus 1 by 2 x plus 5. I just want to enlist the several ways in which we can express the equation of a line. The slope intercept form doesn't make uh, use of any vectors. However, what I'd like you to notice on this is the minimum information that we need in order to describe a line. So we have one point, which is this y-intercept, and we have the slope for the line, which is m. A minimum that you would need to be able to uniquely describe a line in two space is going to be either two points, like you see these two red points, but we can also use one single point, but then we need the slope, or a direction vector would be uh, nice. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to create a direction vector, which is obviously parallel to our uh, line. So this m is my direction vector. I can determine it easily on this uh, graph. It's 2 and minus 1. But basically, I'm going to refer to it as m1 and m2, the two components on x and y. So I have the direction vector, and then I need a point. I'm going to take this point, p0, if you wish for which I construct this position vector, because remember, uh, they are very useful to describe um, anything in an algebraic format. So I'm going to make use of this position vector r0, which is described by x0 and y0, the coordinates of the point there. And this is just a point on the line. I'm going to say that r0 is the position vector for a known point on the line. Then how can I express a, an equation of a line? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the relation between the direction vector and this position vector r0. So now, if I consider this position vector r, the r vector with components x and y is nothing else than a position vector to any other point on this line. You see, I can construct the vector s, this red vector, which is now a scalar multiple of the direction vector m. You notice how r is nothing else than the resultant of the sum between r0 and s. It's just the addition of uh, two geometric vectors. It's that simple. And uh, to be more specific, so I'm going to say r0 plus tm, where t is a real number. Or let's use the algebraic uh, format. I can write the vector xy equals to x0, y0 plus t, the scalar, times the components of the direction vector, m1, m2. This is our vectorial equation of a line. Now, let's uh, look at another form in which we can express the equation of a line. So I'm going to rewrite this uh, vector form so we can have it clear in front of our eyes. And what I notice here is that I can uh, express each of these components, x and y, separately. So I'm going to do just that. So I can write x equal x0 plus t m1 and y equals y0 plus t m2. And this is a group of equations which are uh, dependent on this parameter t. And that's why we call them parametric equations of line 1. For our uh, example, Let's look back at our sketch. You notice that this R0 from the graph we can uh, identify is 3 
and uh, 3.5, the x and y coordinates of the endpoint. Therefore, I can um, replace all these values that I know, the point and the direction vector, in the vectorial equation. So x, y equals to 3 and 3.5 plus t times 2 and minus 1, the direction vector. So I can use the parametric equations x equal 3 plus 2t and y equals 3.5 minus t. So I used the parametric equations here. And t is a real number, like I said, it could be any real number. Let's see if that makes sense. I'm gonna choose any value I want. So given the fact that it's 2 times t here, I'm gonna use 3 by 2. You can choose any value you want. I chose this to verify what results do I get. For x is going to be 3 plus 2 times 3 by 2, which equals to 6. And y is 3.5 minus t, which is 3 by 2. Or we can express this 3.5 as 7 by 2 minus 3 by 2. So it's 7 minus 3 equals to 4 by 2, which is 2. So I found these two values for x and y, 6 and 2. I can have this r vector with the endpoint at 6 and 2 or the position vector 6, 2 is describing also a point that belongs to that line. And if you look on the sketch, you can see that indeed the point of coordinates uh, 6 and 2 or the position vector 6, 2 points to one point on the line. Exactly the one that I sketched in this uh, example. But that's not the only point, obviously. I mean, this describes only one point. Let me take another point just to show you that any point that I can take for this t is indeed going to result into a point on the line. So if I take t equals to 5 by 2, x is going to be 3 plus 2 times 5 by 2, cancel those 2s, and you're going to end up with 8, and y is 3.5 minus 5 by 2, which is 7 minus 5 by 2, which is 1. So I found the position vector 8 and 1. So this should be also a position vector pointing to another point on that line. And let's actually uh, sketch this position vector as well on our graph. So you see the point with coordinates 8 and 1 is indeed on that line. So the position vector 8, 1 uh, that we calculated is indeed describing one point on that line again. Let me take this time a point in this uh, second quadrant because you see it's kind of uh, in the opposite direction of the direction vector and um, so let's see if that makes any difference. It doesn't. But let's see. And I'm going to take this point at minus 2 and 6 and uh, I will verify that there is a value for parameter t for which these parametric equations are being satisfied. So uh, that position vector r minus 2 and 6 is what we considered. Now let's use these values into our parametric equations of the line. So I'm going to say minus 2, which is the x component, is equal to 3 plus 2t. And uh, y component 6 equals to 3.5 minus t. I can express from the first equation that 2t equals minus 5, or t equals minus 5 by 2. From the second equation, I can determine that t equals to 3.5 minus 6, which is minus 2.5 or again minus 5 by 2 and that's what I expected to find the same uh, value that means it's true indeed this position vector points to a point on that line we've seen the vector equation the parametric equations for this line L1 let's see if we find another way because for lines in two space we have another form in which we can describe the equation of the line Instead of this direction vector, what if we consider the vector n, which is the normal vector to line L1? Normal meaning that is perpendicular to the line. So instead of uh, one point and the uh, direction vector, I'm going to use one point and the normal vector to that line. It's basically the same. It's really not that much different than before, but let's see how we can use this information to create an equation this example in particular, the normal vector has the components 2 and 4, as you can see it on the sketch. And I'm going to go back to that uh, slope-intercept uh, form of the equation, y equals mx plus b, 
and replacing the values that I know for the m and b, I have y equals minus 1 by 2 x plus 5. I'm now going to move everything on the left, so that results into minus 1 by 2 x minus y plus 5 equals 0. Of course, this is a particular case, but in a general form, I can say that all these coefficients, I can denote them with generic letters a, b, and c. So I'm going to write a general form ax plus by plus c equals 0. So this is another form in which we're going to express a line. We even call it a scalar equation of the line. And let's see why exactly this scalar equation is uh, important. Why do we even uh, care about this? What would the vector a, b represent? Is there any connection? Are these coefficients a, b, and c uh, giving me any other type of information or not? As a matter of fact, they do. So let's just consider the vector a, b. If we look above, a is minus 1 by 2 and b is minus 1. You may have already noticed that n is a scalar multiple of this a, b. So basically n was 2, 4 equals 2. Since a, b is minus 1 by 2 minus 1, if I use a value of minus 4 for this k, I'm going to get exactly the same. Once again, we have this equation ax plus by plus c equals 0, which is called the scalar equation of the line. And it's very useful because the normal vector to this line, n, is going to be given by the coefficients a and b. Now, let's move on to the tree space and see how we can express a line in tree space. Basically, we're going to express the equation of a line in a vectorial form, just like we did in the two space. So r, that position vector to any point on the line, equals to r0, the position vector to a known point on that line, plus a scalar t times the direction vector. So the equation is just like before, only in the algebraic format, you notice there is a set component added each of these um, vectors. So I'm going to have x, y, z equal to x0, y0, z0 plus t times m1, m2, m3. Each vector with its uh, x, y, and z components. And once again, t, it's a real number. This is the vector equation for a line expressed in 3-space. It's really not that different than the 2-space. And if that's the vector equation, we know right away what the parametric equations are going to look like. So I'm going to have x equal x0 plus tm1, y equals y0 plus tm2, and z equals z0 plus tm3. So basically in 3-space uh, we have this vector equation and parametric equations. We don't have a scalar equation for uh, describing a line in 3-space. The expanded form of that scalar equation uh, that we used for expressing a line in 2-space, in 3-space is going to describe a plane, which we're going to discuss in the next lesson, and we'll see why. But these are the only two types of equations we can express a line in 3-space using vectors. One other thing I wanted to mention here is that a normal vector to a line is perpendicular to that line. And uh, I'm showing you on this uh, line in 3-space that you can have an infinity of uh, normal vectors. In 2-space, they have to be parallel. But um, in 3-space, as you can see, they can point all around the line at each point. Plus that uh, you have this normal vector at any point on that line. So that's why you're going to have an infinity of vectors. All these vectors are normal to the line in 3-space, yet you see they are not uh, parallel to each other. So, therefore I cannot use that um, scalar equation to describe the same way like in 2-space, the equation of a line. And uh, one more thing, however, there is one more way in which you can express a line in 2-space or 3-space. It's basically a derivative from the parametric equations, it's a matter of terminology that I'd like you to be aware of. So, as you notice from these parametric equations, they are all including this parameter t. If I take each of these expression and express t in regards to everything in there, I'm going to have 
from the first equation t equals x minus x0 over m1. From the second parametric equation I have t equals y minus y0 over m2. And from the third equation I get t equals z minus z0 over m3. And since we talk about the same t, I can write all this in one single expression such as x minus x0 over m1 equals to y minus y0 over m2 equals to z minus z0 over m3. And we call this the symmetric equation. And can be used as you can see in uh, two space and three space. If it's only in two space you're not going to have this z and m3 components of the vectors. Now what you need to remember when you express lines in two space and three space is that the minimum information that you need is either two points or one point and the slope or a direction vector. And in two space you know you can actually use the normal vector and one point to express the equation of a line in that scalar form. But for both two space and three space you can express the line using vector equations and parametric equations plus these symmetric equations. And with this I'm going to conclude the lesson. Thanks for watching.